No matter how you look at it, it remains one of the most astonishing feats in the history of sport. 93 professional fights, 93, and George Chevalo was never knocked down. And it's all the more remarkable when you consider who he faced. He fought Foreman, he fought Frazier, and not once, but twice, Muhammad Ali. And it was those fights with Ali that George came to be defined as a warrior, battered, bruised, bloodied, but unbowed. He absorbed crushing blows. Ali's right hook was like a wrecking ball, and they just kept coming. But for George, his toughest fight, in fact, was outside the ring. He endured unimaginable loss. Lost two sons to drug overdoses, another son to suicide, and his wife, Lynn, to suicide as well. There is so much to find out from George. He's got a new memoir called A Fighter's Life. Did he ever regret just clobbering an opponent? What's the hardest he's ever been hit? And his thoughts on the greatest, who famously said that Georgie Chevalo was the toughest guy I ever fought. He's tough, and he's strong, he's determined. Please welcome one of the greats, George Chevalo. How are things? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. Congrats on the book. Pardon? Congrats on this book. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When it's a fighter's life, I mean, your life hasn't just been a fight in the ring. It's been a fight out of the ring too. Yeah, the fight out of the ring is a lot tougher than the fight in the ring. I, I can imagine, you, right? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about, you know, the amount of tragedy that you've gone through in your life. When you walk down the street, you know that some people who recognize you, they know that story. Yeah. So your pain is public. Right. And that when they see you, you know that sometimes that's what they think. Does it ever, is it ever a sensitive subject for you when you know that people know so much about your personal life? Uh, I, th I think in a way it's almost comforting in a crazy kind of way. When people know about it, it's kind of like, uh, I, I guess I say, some, say to myself in some kind of quiet moment, well, people know about it and they, and they, I think they have empathy for me so that way, you know? So it's yeah. kind of like, not that I'm looking for empathy, but I, it, 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 sh it shows. And, uh, and uh, people sometimes come to me, George, I know you've been through a lot. Well, they don't have to detail what I, what, uh, what yeah. I went through, but they're kind of familiar with it. They, they know that I lost uh, a good portion of my family, and, and most people can feel for you that way. So then all of a sudden you go through all this, and then you're that guy in the ring against Muhammad Ali. Right. In the crowd, just a completely different space. Did you ever have a moment in between throwing or getting thrown punches where you looked around and were like, this is unbelievable. Well, it, everything's happening so fast, you don't have time to think. You don't have time to uh, kind of slow things down in your mind. Say, she was, you know where I am? I'm in Maple Leaf Gardens, and here I'm fighting this guy. I think his name is Muhammad Ali. Or, yeah. yeah, and uh, it's kind of hard to believe uh, that it's happening in one way, because it happened kind of fast. They had 17 days notice when they called me to fight. Yeah. And I remember that when they called me up, uh, it was a guy called Mike Mallets, and Ernie Terrell was supposed to fight uh, Muhammad, and he, but he pulled out of the fight. So they called me and said, George, you want to fight in 17 days, Muhammad Ali? I said, hold on to the, on the line. I'm going to call my wife and uh, see what we're doing that night. I said, we're not going to the movies or something. I said, Lenny, honey, what, what are we doing 29th this month? She said, nothing, why? You're going to the fights. Who's fighting me? Who are you fighting? Muhammad Ali. She started laughing. I said, no, no, don't worry, doll. Everything's OK. So anyway, I go back on the other line. I said, it's OK. My wife and I aren't doing anything special that, that night. We're not, going, we're not going to the movies or anything, so I'm free, you know? So that's how, that's how it took place. Well, my, it was a great quote about boxing, Tyson has said, and Mike Tyson, that everybody has a plan until they start getting hit. But with 17 days, what kind of plan can you put together for Ali? Well, with Ali, I know uh, nobody had to tell me what I had to do. I know what I had to do. I had to try to close the gap on him, try not to get him not so he can't move, try to immobilize him, try to get him against the ropes, put my left leg in between his two feet and try to keep, keep, maintain pressure, put my head on his chest and try to, you know, so I, used, I was mostly a, a primarily a body banger anyway. So I try to keep him uh, pressed against the ropes, try to get him so I immobilize him in that sense. Right. I tried to do the best I could, and uh, I did a fairly good job in the first fight. I mean, I didn't do too badly for, uh, for uh, 17 days, uh, you know. Do you think you beat him? Do you think something. you had him? Uh, all I know is he went to the hospital after the fight, and I went down with my wife. He went to the hospital with bleeding kidneys to Mike's hospital. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. He I, said I, you were the I, hardest guy. That, he threw the biggest he, punches he, he ever faced. He complained to my son one time that uh, he was ble had bleeding kidneys for uh, three and a half weeks and couldn't have sex with his wife for a month, and she's still mad at me. She's <laughs> <laughs> is boxing, you think, 
eternal? Like it'll be able to last? Or as the conversations about head injuries grow, boxing has got a big question. I don't think, I don't think boxing will ever fade. I think it'll always be strong. As long as, as, long as they have exciting fights, as long as there's guys around like Mike Tyson, as long as there's guys around like Jack Dempsey, as long as the guys like... Somebody's going to pop up. Somebody's going to pop up to get, to get your attention. Stick around more with George Trevallo right after this. <laughs> So George has known Mayor Rob Ford since Rob was just a kid. I want to get his thoughts on the embattled Toronto Mayor next. Hey, watch out, he's chunk of bars. <laughs> yeah, so I noticed. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum in the fly, yeah. of course. So, I mean, yeah. in real life, how, when you were playing with him, did he have any strength in those arms at all? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I got to lose, right? They didn't, they didn't bring me there to win. <laughs> so I, you know, I got to make Jeff Goldblum look good, right? right? You ever pounded somebody so hard in the ring you felt badly for him during the fight? Did I ever feel badly for him? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No, I couldn't. No. I mean, listen, he's trying to do it to you, so you got to do it to him. <laughs> you know what I mean? true. It's kill or be killed. I mean... Boxing is a tough. It's a tough business. I mean, if you if you had, if you have empathy for the other guy, you're not going to be. You know, you know what I mean. You're going to get uh, annihilated yourself. Right. You, you know. So after the fight, it's over. I've knocked guys out. They'd be laying there, and I and I remember thinking to myself, I feel like a, I feel like ice. My emotions are like a, a piece of ice. And all of a sudden, you thaw out after a while. Then you feel start feeling bad for somebody. If you're not like I've had guys laying there for like uh, five, ten minutes, and yeah. doctors working over them and stuff. So then you start to, all of a sudden you start feeling like a human being again. But when you're a fighter, you're like. You're like an animal, really. I hate to say that. I hate to say that. Yeah. If somebody else said it, maybe it would, I wouldn't like hearing somebody else say it. But you are. You're like, you, know, you want to kill the guy. You want to, he wants to kill you, you want to kill him. You know, because, and the guys get killed in the ring, so you have to realize it's a very dangerous business. Of course. It's, it's a tough business. You know, when people, uh, well, you know, whatever their line of work is, will often have work anxiety dreams, like, oh, they forgot their pants, or they, they can't articulate something properly in a meeting. What's a, a boxer's anxiety dream like? A boxer's anxiety. Do you have dreams about boxing and I've you can't throw a punch? I've never dreamt about a fight in my life. Never? I've never dreamt once about a fight. Never dreamt about a fight. Never. Not once. Is it because you just had so many real life, your brain was like, let's give him a break? Yeah, something like that, I suppose. But I, I, I've never dreamt about boxing. I never, I, and I remember a lot of my dreams, but I've never dreamt about boxing. Did you feel like you were living in a bad dream when you were getting honored by the city of Toronto when Rob Ford was having his big day and the media were all over him? Well, I like Rob. You know, I know him now since he's a kid. I don't yeah. know if you know that. His older brother, Randy, used to hang around with my son, George Lee, my third son. And, uh, you know, they used to get in trouble together. And I see <laughs> Rob... I see, yeah, yeah. I see Rob, his little short little fat kid, and, uh, and Randy, his older brother... <laughs> His older brother uh, would, uh, you know, uh, would be hanging around with my son George Lee, and, and they, you know, and I'd see Rob. Rob was a nice kid. I like Rob anyway. I mean, yeah. I don't care. People like him, don't like him. To me, he's a good guy, and he's, he's a kind person. And, he's, and, uh, and if you're kind and you're decent and you and you want to help people, you're, you're, good, you're a good guy in my book. So, what is the science behind a good uh, a good left jab? Because everybody focuses on the big shot or the uppercut. What's the science behind a good left jab? Uh, left jab. If I hit you with a jab. Yeah. Then I throw a right hand after. If I hit you with a jab and your eyes are momentarily closed, I'm going to hit you with the right hand. So it's important to you. Hit, I, I throw the jab, the first punch out there, I hit you with it, and you're out of commission for that split second, I'm going to hit you with the other shot. Right. You know, so it's important to hit you, hit you with the jab. If you slip the punch, that's a different matter. I might get hit on the, I might get hit on the counter. But, uh, but basically, if, if I hit you with the jab, if I nail you with the jab and throw the right hand after or hit a hook, uh, I should be able to hit you because I, for that split second, you're out of commission. Boom. Okay. You know, well, you, you that great scientific teaching. I'm gonna play you three fights and I want you to tell me what you think of them, okay? Let's play this first fight right here. Take a look at this one. They had already decided Mike Brown got in some <laughs> What do you make of those rights? Well, they're not maximizing leverage one, they're mostly arm punchers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, really, they're going boom, sort of like when you twist your fanny and you're getting your whole 200 pounds behind it or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different feel, but if you're just arm punches, they don't hurt you as much. The only thing is they're fighting with bare knuckles, you're liable to get, get cut easier and right. stuff like that. So. Have you ever fought on skates? No. No. 
Okay, let me get you to write, write this fight here. Right this is after, Warren Talkie. Joshua fight. Lambert in it. I mean, they're tearing buckets yeah. off right now. <laughs> we got Bedlam here. That was all was face grabbing. Yeah, you know? It looked like they were making love or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> George, I don't know how you make love, but grabbing a face mag means you have a very interesting life. <laughs> if that's yeah. the truth. Okay, how about this? This is my favorite fight at all. Can you write this one? From the Ukrainian parliament. I think he stole his pierogies. He stole his pierogies, yeah. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that was actually a fight from the day that he was at Rob Ford's office that wasn't. Um, that's the Ukrainian parliament. When you see, uh, would you ever see somebody uh, be in a fight and just everybody wants to break the fight up, but you just want to give them pointers? You ever had that? I, I, I don't like to see fights. I don't, I don't like to see guys clubbing each other. I, you know, I, and I'm all for peace that way. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing for me to fight somebody else in a, in, a, in a boxing match. I'm not mad at him. He's not mad at me. It's, yeah. it's, it's a sport. It's different. Rita, A Fighter's Life, the story of boxing's last gladiator, George Chavano.